Welcome to the... Oh my god, every time I get this warning. Anyways, <clears throat> I am not in my usual chair with the professional camera and lighting because we are busy, 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 busy this week and that whole process takes a lot longer. I have to put the SD cards in, upload the files. The files are a lot bigger because they're better quality. Um, more editing involved and so I just decided to do the next few solo episodes in this way which is just with my USB microphone plugged into my computer. <clears throat> the platform I use to record with guests I just am using as a solo uh, recording so I'm just basically talking to myself looking at myself in the computer but it's super easy because I can just instantly download the audio file and the video file and use it right from my computer. So that's what we're doing because I am going to be, and I might have talked about this last Thursday, did I tell you guys that I'm going to be um, recording the solo episodes more in advance so that it gives us time to create content for the episodes and also it's just going to be nice to be more organized and consistent and have things done way ahead of time so it's not like scramble scramble every week so this is actually lovely um i am actually recording this on march 24th not that you guys need to know that but just so you get an idea so this episode will come out april 4th, 5th, 6th, April 6th. So hello, how's April doing so far? I hope it's going well. So I put up a question sticker on Instagram the other day and I was just like, ask me anything. And so many people had really good questions and there were a lot of the same question. So I decided to record this episode to answer some of these questions. Um, so let's get into it. First question, let me see, I have it written down over here. Please hold. Um, how did I get into podcasting? Okay, this is a good one. And it's shocking because I started doing all this during quarantine and then you just assume that everybody knows the origin story. Um, but that's not the case at all because obviously I've gained a ton of followers since 2020 and why would you know unless you went back and listened to certain content like reels or podcasts so <clears throat> I finished my PhD about three days before quarantine started literally I was in Ottawa defended my dissertation in person and the funny thing about that is COVID was obviously a thing but it wasn't what it was after they like made everybody quarantine and whatnot it was just kind of like oh there's this thing and like we didn't know how seriously to take it so i traveled from toronto to ottawa i brought my sister with me we rented an airbnb so that i could defend my dissertation in person it's like a it's like a pretty small room that you have your committee of professors um, who have been following your dissertation over the years and uh, so they all sit there you present your final like findings your research project and then they ask you a bunch of questions about it it's like if you're getting into grad school it's the scariest thing you can imagine and it actually was not a big deal at all especially for me like did i take clonazepam yes i did um because i just do if i do public speaking things but <clears throat> my all three of my papers so all three of my individual studies that were a part of my dissertation were already published in peer-reviewed journals so i had already gone through quite the process of defending what I did, understanding why I did things the way that I did and so on and so forth. And so I felt super confident going into the dissertation because like I have already proven myself and gotten published in um, like well-respected academic journals. So what 
is the committee at my university going to say? You know what I mean? So it was actually totally fine. Um, most people don't get published before they defend, obviously, but it just so happened the way that it worked out for me. That's, that's how it happened. And I was very thankful. Um, so yeah, we go to Ottawa. I had a cough, like I was starting to get sick. And I remember I had halls and like water and a tea when I was presenting. And then I got a terrible cough. I was staying, we stayed downtown near the school in an Airbnb the night before I defended. So I defended, we left, and then we were staying at Jen's house. She lives just outside of Ottawa. And then we were planning to go to the spa the next day. And I remember having such a terrible cough, like you guys don't even understand. It was uncontrollable and so aggressive. And we went to the pharmacy to see if they had cough syrup that was stronger than what you could just buy off the shelf. And I remember the pharmacist like talking to us about COVID and she was like, oh, like, do you have any of these, these like, and it was just like a casual conversation. And I was like hacking up a lung, like could barely, like I couldn't control it. And once I started getting a coughing attack, it was like nuts. So then the, she gave us like a heavy duty cough syrup. I stayed at Jen's. We ended up still going to the spa the next day, even though I was like coughing every now and then. But I remember thinking like, oh, this sucks. I can't even enjoy the spa day because I'm like not feeling well. Anywho, came home. <clears throat> Ended up having a terrible cough for a long time. Um, nothing really worked. And I remember one day, this was during quarantine, because like three days after I got home, they they started quarantine. My husband was at work. I was home with Milo and had a raging cough fit so badly that I was gagging, like gasping for breath on my hands and knees in the floor, like on the floor in the kitchen. Um, just like, please end. Oh my gosh. So stressful. And then I was worried because Milo was really young then. I was worried that he was watching me, probably thinking like, what is going on? And that's what I remember about that. Like, I didn't feel sick in the sense of like, I wanted to be in bed and I was tired and like, I just had raging coughing attacks every once in a while. So that was awkward because this was at the time where people were still like running errands and going to the grocery store and stuff like that. And I used to be so nervous to even just go to the store to pick something up because I was like, what if I have a raging cough attack in the store and, you know, all this stuff on the news about COVID and it was crazy. So anywho, that was that. So this question was, how did you get into podcasting, by the way? And this is why I have a podcast, guys, because I just like talk and talk and talk. So anywho, now I'm in quarantine. I am done school, so I don't really have anything to keep me busy, except for obviously taking care of Milo. And my husband's working. So I started January of that year. So quarantine started in March 2020. In January, I downloaded TikTok and I remember we went to Vancouver and Caroline and I went on like a little trip. We stayed somewhere for like one or two nights. I don't know. I forget what it was called, like Harrison Hot Springs or something. Um, and we were playing around with TikTok, like trying to understand how to use it and like do some trending things and I remember thinking oh my god I suck at this so much like Caroline's a photographer she's like just really good at filming things and like lighting and all that stuff and I just remember thinking like wow like I suck at this so I was feeling like um like I had low TikTok self-esteem in January of 2020 and then when I was in quarantine with Milo, I decided to just keep playing around with it. And if you look at my very first TikToks, it's literally like a video sped up of Milo, like dancing to like a Shake Your Booty song or something <laughs> like that. That was my that was my work back then. Um, but yeah, I kept playing with it and then obviously watching TikToks. And then if you watch a lot of TikToks, you get ideas, and it was very easy for me to see trending videos on TikTok 
and then do them in my own way um, with a mom angle or a parenting angle or a being stuck in quarantine with a young child angle. And then also, obviously being in in quarantine with Milo at that age, I think he was like 18 months um, in the middle of it. So difficult times. It was kind of interesting because every time I would be going through a difficult time in quarantine with Milo, I would think about it in terms of a TikTok and then it would make me giggle and I would be like, oh my God, this would be like, it's terrible going through this in this moment, but it's actually hilarious if you create it and present it in this way. So for example, when the parks were still open, like going to the park in you know, the heat of the summertime and he doesn't want to leave. And I'm like standing at the slide, like, oh my God, can we just leave? And then I made a TikTok about it that it was like five, after you've been at the park for five minutes and it was like, it's been set or what's that song? It's been seven hours in 15 days or whatever it is. Anyways, I would just like come up with all these ideas based on other TikToks that I had seen. And then my TikTok started to grow and I was, I started um, posting TikToks about topics like being the default parent, like, but in a funny way. And then I would get comments from so many parents and moms just, you know, explaining their situation or saying something about being the default parent. And it was just always sparking more, um, like more conversation. It was like, I wanted to address all these comments or my TikToks were 30 second videos, but I wanted to be able to have a full blown conversation about all these different topics. So especially with experts, um, you know, oh, like you want to talk about boundaries? Like, let's get a psychologist on and talk seriously about boundaries for a while. So I was like, hmm, I guess to do that, I could start a podcast, which honestly, the last thing I would have ever expected myself to do in the world is start a podcast. Like, I'm not shitting you. That is the last thing I would have ever expected myself to do, which makes sense because I am that kind of person. I remember when I went to school in Florida for my first year of undergrad because I was playing volleyball. I'll get to that story another day. Um, in the U S or no, this, this is interesting. So if you are an athlete, they want you to choose just a general major. So you know how you can major in like psychology or biology. So they wanted you for the first, like, I think you have to actually choose your, like a subject by third year university. And so if you were an athlete, they wanted you to just choose general because the benefit of that is that you don't have any requirements. So if I were to major in psychology, let's say, it would be like, okay, in your first year, you have to do all like X, Y, and Z classes and have X, Y, and Z grades for these classes. So the way you can get around that is to just major as like a general studies kind of thing. So that's what I did because they didn't want athletes to not meet requirements because then there's limits on if you can play or not. Like the when I tell you the NCAA is like, obviously it's a massive business, but the athletes, like you are, I went to volleyball school and I just like sprinkled classes around practices and tournaments and like training sessions, physio sessions, like it's nuts. It's not like that in Canada because we don't pay our athletes. So I was on a full scholarship. In Canada, we don't give athletes full scholarships. So it's almost like there's not this feeling that your coach owns you and can like, like the athletics part of it will run your life and athletics comes before school. Um, it's nuts. So anywho, I 
had to major just like general. So I had to take a math class in university. I hated math. I did really well in math one year of high school because I had a certain teacher that I just like connected with. It made sense to me. But then I was terrible at math um, for the other years. So the fact that I had to take a math class my first year university, I didn't understand a thing. Like I remember sitting in that class and I was just like, what is going on? Like this is a different language. I don't understand. I ended up dropping the class. I was like, Ugh, I'll deal with this another time. But I ended up leaving that school and coming back to Canada. But anyways, the point of this story is I never would have thought that I would podcast. And at the same time, I never would have thought that I would have been like a math kind of person. But when I came back to Canada, decided to major in psychology, um, part of the requirements of being in psychology was statistics. And so I was terrified of taking stats because it looked very mathy with equations and whatnot. Um, I ended up loving it. I got like 90% the first year I took stats. And then that was always my strong class. And I was obsessed with it was statistics. And then moving along, like even in my master's degree, the stats that were a part of my thesis, super advanced statistics stuff that was not like common, like you're not taught that in your master's program. And then in my PhD, it was the same thing. Like I remember one of my comments on my dissertation was that I had state of the art statistics. And I was like, who would have thought, you know, because I hated math and I was terrified of statistics and that ended up becoming my thing. So same thing. I never would have thought that I would be podcasting ever. Um, and now I podcast like I almost dropped out of school because of public speaking. And now I just speak into a microphone. Like what? Like, how did that happen? So anywho, wanted to talk more about these subjects, started a podcast. I literally just researched everything about podcasting, like ordered a $60 microphone, which is the microphone that I'm using right now from Amazon, set up, I read somewhere in some article about podcasting or watched a YouTube video. I learn everything from YouTube. It's really funny. Um, they were like, yeah, if you podcast from your closet, it's really good because you have all the clothes hanging and it's like a sound buffing and it's really good for the audio. So I ordered or I went to Ikea. I got this little round table that would fit in our closet in our bedroom and put it in the closet, got a little chair, set up my laptop with my microphone, and I started making podcasts from my closet. Um, when I first started, I wasn't recording video because podcasting, like the resources and platforms and programs to use in podcasting nowadays is much better than it was when I started. So yeah, started in my closet without audio. I remember planning out my solo episodes and having pages of notes about like mom poster syndrome, being the default parent, um, and just sitting with my little microphone and talking and that's, and I would just put them up into this website. You upload them and that website sends it out to all the podcast platforms. I hired someone to make, um, or no, my very first podcast cover. Oh my God. I've had three different podcast covers. The very first one, my brother-in-law, my sister's fiance, drew the graphic for it. I'm going to find it and post it. It's crazy. Um, and then I hired someone to do the second album cover that I had. And then now the most recent cover, the one that I have right now, I also hired a company. When I hired them to do the website and the branding and everything, they created the podcast cover for me as well. So nuts, like nuts. So anywho, that's why I started the podcast and now I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. I love that I get to meet with so many different people and actually form a connection because I'm not just like, oh, hey, hi, how you doing? Like I'm sitting and talking with people for 45, 60 minutes. 
Um, I love, I don't know, I just, and I love the things that we talk about on this podcast because I don't think people talk about it anywhere else, not in this way anyways. Um, so yeah, that's how it all started and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. If anything, I will start a second podcast because I'm crazy. My dream is to have a daily podcast, but it needs to be legit and I need to have like a professional studio where every single morning I go in, record for like 20, 30 minutes and then put it up right away. So down the line, I'm sure that is something that I will do, especially now that these solo episodes are going to be recorded more in advanced more in advance, so it's not going to be um, like everyday goings-ons as much as it used to. The evolution of the solo episodes is a really interesting thing to consider. It's just like it's morphed into so many different things. Um, so anywho, that was my 21-minute answer to how did you get into podcasting? Um, okay. Somebody asked, how are you guys adjusting after losing Muffin? So I think we're doing really well. Um, Milo, it's interesting. So in the morning and check out the infographic that I posted, I collaborated with Dr. Tanya Kotler about advice for families. If you have a pet that died or is going to pass away soon, it was invaluable advice. Um, I was able to text Tanya and she was kind of working me through it over the course of the weekend and it was so helpful and some of the things I never would have thought of or considered on my own. So check that out if you haven't seen it. It's on both of our Instagram accounts. She's at Dr. Tanya C, I think, or is it? No, Dr. Kotler, I think. One second, let me check. Doctor, doctor, yeah, it's Doctor D R Kotler C O T L E R. So one, okay. So what we decided was the day that we like Milo. I think understood that something was wrong just because Muffin was coughing and like hacking all the time. Uh, so I'm sure in his little mind, like he understood that something was wrong because even as he, as like humans, when we're sick, sometimes we cough. And I think he understood that, um, but he never really verbalized it. So our plan was the day that we knew we had to bring Milo to the vet or Muffin to the vet to put him down. We were going to tell Milo that morning and explain to him and, you know, let him say goodbye to Muffin and so on. And it ended up being totally fine. He didn't have much of a reaction, but I don't think he really, really grasped what was happening. Um, and Tanya said like age four is when they start to grapple with it and start to think about it and but they might not have figured it out totally so we explained to him that you know muffins like and we just flat out said like muffin we have to say goodbye to muffin today like he's not gonna to to be with us anymore um he's gonna be dying and milo and like he's going to doggy heaven and he's gonna go you know, spend time with his mom and dad that have died. And, you know, we were just saying things like that because Tanya said, like, don't be afraid to say death or dying or he's going to die or he died. You know, like I think as parents, we want to shy away from using those words, but it's important. And like, it is what it is. It's like not calling body parts by their actual name. Like, no, that is what it is. Like, just say it. So, we did that in the morning and in the afternoon we like were we like had him say goodbye and everything but again he was he wasn't emotional he was like excited to give muffin his happy meal and um like pet him and he was reading him books and so he understood a little bit i think but he was never emotional about it and then 
um, a couple days later, no, the next day, I think he out of nowhere just said, does, does Muffin have to stay there forever? And my husband and I looked at each other like, oh my God, like this is so sad. And we were like, yeah, like Muffin, Muffin died. Like he's, he's in doggy heaven now. He's, he's not going to be coming back. Like that's why we said goodbye to him. And, um, he was like, but what if it gets dark where he is? And like my heart broke. Um, and then he said, what if he, what if he keeps coughing? And we were like, oh my gosh, like trying to explain to him, like, like, don't worry, he's not coughing anymore. Um, so yeah, that was the one time he kind of brought it up and was wondering if he was coming back. And then we're sure to keep bringing it up. I ordered a bunch of pictures of Muffin to make a photo album with them. So we'll do that in the next few days. And then I ordered a bunch of books from Amazon about that people recommended. So one is called The Invisible String. It's more generalized. It's not specific about pets dying. One's called The Memory Tree, which was pretty cute. It's about a fox dying in the forest and like all his animal friends um, like talking about him and thinking about memories with him. And then we got one called The Invisible Leash, which is really cute. It's about a little boy's dog dying. And then his friend is this little girl who had a cat that passed away. And they talk about how they're always connected to their pets with this invisible leash. So that's really cute. We read that to Milo the other day. But again, like we're trying to keep talking about it to give him the opportunity to ask questions or you know, be emotional about it, whatever he wants. Um, like we often say like, oh yeah, like we miss Muffin or Bubbles miss Mrs. Muffin. Um, but yeah, so far it's, he's been totally okay with it. Um, I cry every once in a while. We picked up Muffin's ashes the other day. So you have a choice of cremating them just with other animals or you can do like a cremation where it's only them and then you can keep their ashes so we chose to do that and then they have this little booklet of urns that you can put their ashes in and so we were looking through the book and I saw this really nice one it was like a natural wood and it was just a flush like a flat box um it looks like a seamless box of nice kind of like like the hardwood floors in our house like it's that vibe and you can slide you can pull out the front and slide a little photo of your pet on the inside of it so I chose that one and then when we chose that the girl was like oh that's gonna cost extra like the only ones that are included are like these three here and I was like I want this one so we ended up getting that one and it's engraved on the top. It says Muffin and we kept his little, um, the thing that's on his collar that has his name on it. It's shaped in a bone and there's little diamonds on it and it says Muffin. So we're going to keep that, set that up in the house and in the new house and yeah, just try and keep talking about him and answer any questions that Milo has, but yeah, he was like the best dog ever, like the nicest. He's never been mean to another animal ever or a human ever. Like, it's crazy. Bubbles is a little bit of an a-hole. Um, he's been okay. I think he misses him, but they were never really close. Bubbles almost like bullied Muffin all the time, um, which was interesting. But yeah, I think he does miss him and... I washed this pillow that Muffin used to lay on all the time and I when I brought it up and put it back on the floor, Bubbles like laid on it right away. It was so sad. Um, anywho, I'm going to end this episode here. If you guys haven't listened to Tuesday's episode, please go do that. It's five conversations that you, five conversations that will transform your love life and it is with Vanessa Marin and Xander Marin all about sex talks, talking about sex. Um, so yeah, 
go listen to that if you haven't already and follow the podcast account at the mom room podcast and thanks so much for listening and i hope your children sleep tonight